new from Shameless Films, number 25 in the Shameless range, Who Saw Her Die, starring George Lazenby. And this film is directed by Aldo Lado, who did Short Night of the Glass Dolls, which was fantastic, and The Night Train Murders, which is pretty terrific as well. And the more Lado stuff that I see, the more I appreciate him as being one of the best Italian genre filmmakers. And this one is similarly in vain as we follow a, a man, well, at the start of this one, we see a, a small child being murdered and buried. And it's so starkly shot and dispassionate that it can't help but be upsetting. It feels needless and unnecessary. Um, and that kind of sets the tone for the movie. Uh, there is this wonderful score that, that accompanies the film uh, and plays as big a part in it. Ennio Morricone's score for Who Saw Her Die is phenomenal. And there is this wonderful piece of music that's used whenever there is the, the killer stalking around the scene. And it is haunting, foreboding, it is a sign of worry whenever it appears and it's just a phenomenally good tune. And this film is full of a great score of which that is really the pinnacle. This is set in Venice, a precursor to Don't Loop Now, eh, as we follow Franco, an artist, as he kind of connects with his daughter who's visiting him for a number of weeks. Um, which again... It goes on for a sort of long period of time with just these two people connecting and it's such a wonderful sequence of just seeing them enjoying each other's company. Uh, of course, this is a movie about a child murderer and a, the inevitable will happen and Franco, George Lazenby character, is then sent down a spiralling path of obsession as he tries to figure out why and who uh, it is. It's a great film and the way it uses its score, the way it uses its visuals as we go through Venice. And it's an off-season Venice. It's murky, it's washed out, it is full of fog, it is foreboding in almost every sequence. And you just see this character dealing with grief in his own way as he tries to solve what has happened. There are so many secondary characters in this that are all horrible people. And as we kind of scratch away the surface, we realise just how detestable these people really are. But it offers up a wealth of potential suspects, which I really love. You get Anita Strindberg, who is phenomenal, one of my favourite um, actresses within the Italian genres. Um, the Swedish actress is just terrific. There is a, a solemn moment with... Uh, Elizabeth, her character, and Franco laying in bed as it pans from Franco to her. And it's just two people in their grief, and it's just such a wonderful uh, idea captured on film. And it, that kind of ekes into the, the whole idea that this definitely had somewhat of an influence on Don't Look Now. I think George Lazenby, who I was also a bit worried about because I've seen him in various films and sometimes he can be present and sometimes he can be uh, not as present. Here he feels uh, as if he's giving his best. Uh, although he is a very stoic character, he is someone who is internalising a lot of what is going on. It still comes across his performance, uh, his obsession, his uh, always pushing and trying to get to it, the little moments where his temperament just breaks because uh, the stresses of the situation are all fantastic. But it's uh, Lado's direction, it's his pacing, it's the use of the music, it's the setting, everything comes together to create this wonderful, wonderful vibe within the film. It's unsettling, it's off kilter, it just puts you in the back foot. It's terrific, it's a really solid JAL movie. Even the ending of it, as it comes around, is almost it's almost perfunctory. We, we, we need to get a wrap up. We need to figure out everything that's happened. But our journey with Franco as a character, as a man, being able to turn off that obsession, which I kind of like the idea and the thematic of that within this one. I love this film. This was it was a terrific and a beautiful looking 
giallo i loved the restoration on this and it was just a great film to enjoy i would highly recommend it if you're a fan of italian movies you may have already seen it if not definitely pick this one up let's dive into the disc and have a look at the extras here we are on the disc for who saw her die let's go to the extras First up, we have Ring a Ring O Rosie, an interview with Aldo Lado, which runs for 36 minutes, 40 seconds. Uh, he talks a little bit about Short Night of the Glass Dolls, which was terrific to hear. Uh, Bernardo Bertolucci, I'm working on Last Tango in Palace. Uh, how it was a more kind of impressional set, and his love of Vince. Next, we have The Quest for Money, interview with Indio Doria, the producer. Uh, he was talks a little bit about how he was producing two films at once, how he jumped into being an actor and made a lot of enemies, um, how Lazenby was useless, he really doesn't like him, uh, which is kind of funny to hear. Then we have To Live and Die in Venice, interview with Francesco Barilli, which is 11 minutes 20 seconds, he was a screenwriter. He talks a little bit about how things changed from his script to screen just because of money issues that they had then we have Aldo Lado on Who Saw Her Die which is a 45 minute 39 Q&A session um, which covers interesting information and that's the extras for Who Saw Her Die there we have it Who Saw Her Die is out now pick it up pick it up it's great I'd love to know your thoughts on Who Saw Her Die so let me know in the comment box below what you thought of this one as always, there is more content up here. You can see more of my stuff in the description box below are links to Patreon, membership program, and Man V Film. Always in which you can support me. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.